Hey everyone, I'm going to show you how to use interface in Viper. Interfaces are used for contract to contract interaction. So I'll show you how to call functions in other contracts. We'll take a look at how to call view functions, non-payable and payable functions. And lastly, we'll see what happens when we call a function that does not exist. And finally, I'll mention something about security when you're calling other contracts. As mentioned earlier, interfaces allow contracts to call other contracts. So for this example, we'll first write a contract that is getting called. I'll name this contract interface receiver. And then we'll write the contract that is going to call this contract. And we'll name that contract interface caller. All right, to start off with, we'll first define some functions. For the example of calling a view function, I've created a function called getBalance. And when this function is called, it will return the amount of ether that is stored in this contract. And we do that by returning self.balance. For the example of calling a non-payable function, so this means that a function that cannot receive ether. I've defined a function called callMe. And for the input, it takes in a message of string. That message is logged using an event named log. And this log event logs the sender and the message. And also for this call me example, I'm going to return a uint256. And later on, I'll show you how to capture this output in the contract that is going to be calling this function. For the example of calling a payable function, so this means that this function can receive ether. I've created a function named pay. And when this function is called, it'll log an event named payment with message.sender and message.value. And this message.value stores the amount of ether that was sent when this function was called. Now for the last example, what happens if we call a function that does not exist inside this contract? Well, recall from a previous video that when a function that does not exist is called, the default function will be called. So here I've declared the default function. And when this function is invoked, it will log the message function does not exist. And this completes the contract that we're going to be calling from another contract. Over here on the left, we have our contract that we just wrote. This is the example contract that we're going to be calling from another contract. Over here on the right, we have a contract that we're going to be calling this contract. And in order for this contract to call this contract on the left, we'll have to define an interface. And we do that by declaring interface. I'll name this interface receiver. And inside this receiver interface, we're going to be declaring the functions that we're going to be calling on this contract. So if we scroll down a little bit, for this example, we're going to be calling this function, getBalance. So I'm going to copy the function signature, paste it here. And since this getBalance function is a view function, I'll declare it as view. We're also going to be calling the callMe function. So again, I'm going to copy the function signature, paste it here. Now this time, this function is not a view function. This is a non-payable function. So I'll declare it as non-payable. We're also going to be calling the pay function. So I'm going to copy the function signature and then paste it here. This pay function is a payable function. So we'll declare it as payable. And for the last example, I'm going to show you what happens when we call a function that does not exist over here. So over here on the right, I'll declare this function as does not exist. And it will be a non-payable function. The reason why we're declaring this as non-payable and not a view function is to show you that it's going to call a default function, which is going to emit the log. And this log will be stored on the blockchain. We've declared our interface which defines the function that we're going to be calling on the receiver contract. So let's now write the function that's going to actually be making the calls. I created a function called getBalanceOfReceiver. 
For the input, it's going to take in the address of the receiver contract. So how do we call the function getBalance on the receiver contract? Well, you would do it like this. Since we defined the receiver interface above, here we say receiver. And inside the parentheses, we put in the address of the receiver. And then call the function get balance. Now we want to return the output of this function call. So here we'll say return. And that is how you call a function on another contract. For the call me example, we could do something similar. So I created a function called call receiver. Again, it takes in the address of the receiver contract. And to call the call me function, we just say receiver, pass in the address, and then call the function call me. Here, the call me takes in the input of string, so we pass in a string hello. Now, if you notice, it returns the output of uint256. And to capture this output inside here, all we have to do is assign the output to a variable. So we'll say num is of type uint256 is equal to the output of this call. Further example of calling the pay function and also sending ether, we're going to transfer the ether from the default account available in Remix, the EOA. That ether will be sent to this contract. And then from this contract, we will send the ether to the receiver contract. I've named this function pay receiver, and unlike the other two examples above, this function is declared as payable, so that this function can receive ether from the EOA. Now to call the pay function on the receiver contract, I think you figured out how to do it from the two examples above. So we say receiver, pass in the address, and then call the function. Here we call the pay function. But now how do you specify the amount of ether that you want to send when calling this function. Well, you do it like this. So inside the function call, we say value is equal to the amount of ether that we're going to be sending. For this example, we will just forward the ether that was sent to this function. So we'll say message dot value. And for the last example, we'll call the function does not exist. I created a function called call does not exist. This will try to call a function called does not exist on the receiver contract. And we expect the default function inside the receiver contract to be called. Inside Remix, I activated Viper plugin and then copy the code for the two contracts, the receiver contract and the caller contract. Now the Viper compiler is still not working, so we'll set up the local compiler. To do that, I've opened my terminal and I'm inside the folder that contains the Viper server. First, I'm going to activate virtualm by typing source vm bin activate. Then I'm going to start the server by typing python server.py. The server is running on port 8080. And back inside Remix, I'm going to point the port to 8080. Compile the contract and then deploy the contract. I'm going to do the same for the receiver contract by selecting on the code for the receiver contract, clicking on the Viper compiler, and then hitting compile, and then deploying the receiver contract. Scrolling down, we have our two contracts. So we're going to be calling these functions on the caller contract which we'll call the receiver contract. I'm going to copy the address of the receiver contract and then call the get balance of receiver. And it returns zero. This is what we expected since there is zero ether stored in the receiver contract. Next, calling the call receiver function, we expect the message of hello to be logged from here. So I'm going to call this function and inside the transaction logs, you can see here that the message hello was logged. For the next example, we'll send some ether. So I'll paste the address of the receiver contract. Scroll up 
to sensometer we'll send 100 way and then call pay receiver looking at the transaction log you can see here that the payment event was emitted and the amount of ether that was sent is 100 way for the last example we expect the default function to be called because the function that we're calling does not exist so i'm going to call this function and inside the transaction logs you can see that the message function does not exist was logged the last thing that i'll mention in this video is about security for all of these functions notice that the user can pass any address as receiver and this address does not necessarily have to be a receiver contract that we wrote for example a hacker we'll name her eve eve can craft and deploy a contract that's going to do a re-entrancy attack on this contract and then call this pay receiver function and this might send more ether from this contract than what we want it to so whenever you're allowing users to pass in your address you should put some validations and protections inside your contract before you allow that address to call other functions and the checks and guards that you'll need to put in place really depends on your contract for example you might want to put a re-entrancy lock on your contract another thing that you might want to do is validate the address check that the address was already approved before that address can call this function and there are many more things that you should do to secure your contract but smart contract security in itself can be a series of videos so i'll leave it at that thanks for watching and take care